Hi, Tina. Okay, um, I don't know if you've ever uh, saw one of the videos I made or um, if we ever talked about it. Basically, um, I'm, I'm into this theorem, um, I, call, I can call it, that's um, sort of a, a, a theorem of human intelligence condition. Ex no, human, ex existential human intelligence, the, the condition of, the condition of human, uh, the, the existential condition of human intelligence. The existential condition of human intelligence, uh, which basically explains um, impl explains our setup, sort of how we're naturally wired as a, as a species, as as a human brain. Um, and I kind of I, I I did see some stuff when I read some stuff when I was a kid. I don't know if you ever heard of Claude Rael, which is he's. Um, I don't know if he's still alive. He's he might be in Italy now. But I read a book when I was a teenager, but that really didn't influence me. I didn't believe him. I thought he was just crazy. He talks about the human species being sort of a bacteria that is expanding in the universe and you know spawns and 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 spreads out. And then I, well, anyways, I came around. And I go, well, you know, of course that makes a lot of sense. The way what, but then he talks about things that are written in the Bible and. He has a whole support um, explanation for it that, I don't know, it's kind of eccentric. But then um, I've also see, seen some, a lot of people who, uh, groups or what, what, you know, beliefs to do with how some people believe that we, uh, our intelligence was genetically created by, you know, a, a higher intelligence in the universe and um, we know there's and it's more of an archaeological scientific thing where they they notice a big shift a big change where all of a sudden uh, the the para the the parabolas um, start start going up really quickly right at the time of um, of uh, the creation of writing, or the appearance, the emergence of writing, I'm sure you've seen this. But I, you know, and, and I never really came at this theorem through these routes, although obviously there's people who are uh, going around the same area. And I came at it differently, I, I can't remember, I can't explain how, you know, one thing led to another, but basically, it does seem that our intelligence um, is, is sort of like a added, um, it's, 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 it's got a, a faster pace. It's coming from a, 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 um, an added or a, 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 um, like it's, it's joined our evolution and has, uh, it's, it's not the creation of our own natural pace. In other words, it seems to have, have a speeding up uh, sort of like its own agent. It's it's an, an integral um, speed or or pace of itself, like something that was added. And so, I'm not really explaining how, uh, but I'm looking at the the math, sort of the 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 the, the physics of it, the the, the dynamics that uh, relationship between the human mind, the natural mind, uh, the, the in-touch and harmony with nature, um, uh, sort of uh, intuitive, um, evolutionary-based thinking of, uh, you know, body-based, um, in harmony with our physicality, mind, has with this... Um, other kind of integral uh, point of intelligence. It's almost like we have a relationship happening in our brain and uh, between 
what are the agenda of the natural sort of primitive intelligence is the one that came along with evolution and the one that is also incapable somehow of of extraordinary uh, uh, things you know and so some people have said it was brought and that of course nobody has talked about this but maybe it is natural maybe at some point species are left alone on a planet and one uh, develops starts developing a part of human intelligence a lot faster very exponentially and so it becomes like a separate force a separate ident uh, entity intelligent entity not entity um, uh, perspective reasoning perspective point of reasoning in any case it's a relationship that's the main important thing is to understand that there is an intelligence which is about what comes to us naturally, what makes us ultimately more satisfied and happy. Um, how we relate to our family, to our friends, uh, and socially, and uh, what our body uh, experiences in the living world. And then the ambitious brain that can also be summarized as, you know, it can also uh, be uh, thought of as the intelligence that contains what we ought to think about our conscious perception on life and ourselves what we ought to think this means what we ought to what we believe we ought to do and so everything that is a science um everything that is uh, a human science has sort of a, an ambitious this 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 entity and this, this intelligence integral i don't even know what to call it it's um it's not an entity, but I, I refer to it like um, a perspective, its own, I can imagine like a, a bulb pushing inside a bag and two fists inside a bag, you know, one wanting to do one thing and the other one wanting to do something else. Uh, you know, it has an ambitious that is geared towards our, ultimately our survival, but it's not thinking very very soundly as far as the evolutionary purpose of maintaining the collective together because evolution creates the organism the collective as a as a, a single a single expression you know uh plurality emerges in evolution it, nature doesn't create one tree and then makes a collective or one human being or one animal and then makes a collective it just all the collective appears simultaneously and evolves simultaneously. There's never an individual uh, as far as evolution is concerned. It's always many that it's evolving. And so for our healthier, more uh, evolutionarily wise intelligence, uh, the, 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 the integrity of the collective is fundamental. We, we need to belong and we need the acceptance we need to always be together uh, we need the approval and we try to satisfy the collective and uh, we copy and we learn from others and we teach uh, we teach and educate others it's you know these forces are very much close to the unquestionable truth of evolutionary intelligence but the other intelligence which is the one that says oh i'm gonna invent something to solve a problem for example uh i call it sometimes the logical reasoning intelligence has uh you know it's not totally wild out of control it's always thinking about what i want and what i want is the same thing others want so that my desires are always automatically the collective's desires except that the way i go about it with this logical intelligence proposes extraordinary things and so we invent artifacts and sciences and and complex um, intellectual literatures and uh, forms of systems of administration and we invent all sorts of things that are um kind of loose cannons in a sense they they are and uh they they do stem from a, some from someone who who um uh, is repeating and echoing what others want therefore it is a it is you know we also are thinking in how to 
uh, serve the collective and do things for, uh, for uh, like invent a government system, for example. We're thinking logically, but in reality, that intelligence is not endowed with a natural intuitive ability to always be thinking of the collective only and first. It's more selfish, it's more capricious, it's a different kind of intelligence. So as a result, all our sciences I forgot what the, what we were talking about now is, and I, I want to bring it around to the post that I told you I was going to make this for. Uh, it'll come back. Um, uh, all that's this basically explains why all our sciences fail ultimately. They're untrue to the natural form. We have a great idea, and it seems it's going to work, and it works fine, but immediately it starts harming or neglecting or being indifferent towards nature. Everything, everything we do uh, in the invention of agriculture, uh, you know, we're r riddled with problems and all of our biggest problems in, in, in the world have to do with what our own inventions have created. If we would just be going around picking food from the forest, you know, basically no, no one would go hungry, but because we organize food and, and then we, we, we put it in places and we decide how we're going to distribute it. And so the invention of uh, the food industry and agriculture and all the systems of, 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 of that we've uh, substituted natural foraging with fail because they're created by this other intelligence. They're not our natural living intuitive pr always present intelligence which is the other entity so this relation there's a relationship here i'm going to pause and look at the post because otherwise I'm, I'm not going to go back to it hang on okay yeah basically and so all our systems like schools education morality um the logic and the intellect behind philosophies and and civil uh you know, uh, values and religions, uh, the logic of, of, of spiritual schools of teaching, you know, all of it is our idea of what living should be like. And it's created by this other intelligence. And so this is basically why we're destined to constantly be, we, we live in a con constant state of tripping, in other words. We have been endowed, either by this occurrence of a singular species all of a sudden developing uh, a fast-moving part of their intelligence, or perhaps, you know, some beings are God, you know, some other beings are, are you know, we want to do this with this uh, basic uh, humanoid form so that it can learn to use this intelligence and take care of its illnesses and make life effort, you know, free of all the burden of, of, of physical organic life, you know, and everything that afflicts all living forms of the universe, gravity, biology. And so want to give it a tool so that it can do something, live better, but it needs to, to that question, there's a, a chasm there. There's a, uh, something that is, uh, not, made for us. We have to understand that this is kind of foreign to us and therefore acknowledge that we are destined to perpetually be prone to failure because this other intelligence didn't evolve with us. We haven't embraced that notion yet. We continue to think it's all about us and we have other beliefs, you know, that God, you know, wants this or that um, or that you have to live by, you know, this or that, or people are uh, this way or that way. But we, we haven't really, as a species, as a collective, understand the simple beginning of a relationship between two intelligence and how they're prone to not harm, harmonize. There are con in constant instability. And one is always going to cause the, the, the first one, the, the, the evolutionary primitive physical base intelligence problems it will always because it wants so much it can do so much and it can do more it, it doesn't harmonize with with creation of with world the earthly creation or our bodies it you know and it, it invents things it wants to 
uh, you know, change our gender. <laughs> it wants to, you know, it wants to make plastic rice. It, it's just totally crazy, but it's so capable and we have, and it, it's wild and out of control and creating toxins in our, in our environment and what have you, because we haven't un identified it as, as something that has externally come to us or appeared and externalized itself and created a relationship with the other perpetual eternal intelligence, which is we're always going to prefer clean water. We're always going to, uh, you know, be hurt if, if our children don't love us, uh, you know, and yet it's pretending to, it's pre this other intelligence proposing abortion and to have, uh, you know, uh, children in petri dishes. So our world is been this has been designed by th this other intelligence, and we have adapted to it. We have said, well, we can live with that, and we have no sought to normalize things. But the the constant reemergence of arguments, for example, in abortion, is because the other intelligence is always there, present, reminds something doesn't feel right about this. Something doesn't feel right about, you know killing, uh, you know, it, everything that, even, even hunting has, uh, this is, this, uh, this goes back to what you're saying, that we are at the base good. We are good, uh, and we wouldn't even uh, kill other animals, much less our own babies, or, or um, you know, uh, and other things, that, or war. Uh, if it wasn't because this other intelligence thinks he's, it's smarter, and, 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 and can do things better, and so uh, carries on, and then we go along with it because we're inseparable. They, they have a relationship, that, but they move together, they can't separate, and so we adapt to this capacity that we have, and we live in this perpetual air. And so we haven't really yet uh, been able to um, start at this point, start at the point that we should be happy because it means that we we understand that if it weren't for this that intelligence we'd be you know walking around with diseases natural diseases how we lived not that long ago dragging our injured festering wounds for years and teeth falling out and you know and all the problems that uh, we had instead of saying really be joyous and grateful that we have this capacity to all for all of us to be all healthy and no nobody to suffer diseases and all these all these problems of the world would be solved with this capacity if we only understand that it is not it is it needs to be put in check it needs to be understood as something that we have to handle it it's always going to not know how to make us happy. We have to handle it. We have to uh, tame it and make it uh, abiding and catering to the natural design so that we can have harmony and use it truly for our well-being. But we don't, we don't have this yet. We've never had that. We're still sort of like convinced that that is us, that capacity to... And, uh, you know, invent a chemical and and and, and put poison in, in, the, in the ground to better a crop. It's just something that needs to happen. We don't realize that it's the mistake being created by that other. We haven't understood yet the ex the, the the separate, uh, unseparable relationship that we're living in. This constant, perpetual state of instability. It's not going to one day be harmonious. It is just something that uh, will always be this way but knowing that it will always be that way will bring some sort of uh will, will change the world basically we would we would realize the situation we're in and we would for the first time uh have an idea of, of where to you know where to sail <laughs> where to take the boat if you know that the wind is always going to be hitting you from this side uh, then you're going, your ship is going to be geared in order to always take that wind that wants to knock your ship over and it will no longer be knocked over all the time and you not know why it's getting knocked over because we'll know that this is our 
existential predicament. This is the condition that we live on. And so, anyways, this also explains, it's, uh, and it goes into the area of being uh, atheist, agnostic, or this also explains why there is a, a space for a God that has an answer to our error, our, this erring all the time. Because we've uh, created the literature of a God that says, oh, you were... Because, you see, we weren't able... In any, any living form that all of a sudden appears with this capacity would start living and all of a sudden it would say, hey, I invented this great thing and now all of a sudden it's running over my children, a car, let's say, or, uh, you know, I invented weapons to to be strong and defend my home and all of a sudden those weapons are coming back and killing my children or I invented um, um, a chemical to make food better or make a, or cure disease and now it turns out that it, it betrayed me and it's poisoning me and we're suffering things that we never had before and so something in the mind says for evolution the, the pure primitive cosmic evolution that just sends life forward and continues growing and evolving does not understand anything but forwardness and and proliferation and good and growth and mature and exhausting the forces the combustions of life until we're spent and then in the next generation we're like a cloud that rolls perpetually towards the horizon as far as evolution is concerned and that means that we are always good, like you said. We're always uh, growing. We're always nurturing and, and being nurtured and going forward and proliferating the collective. And so, because we are, th therefore, we're born in good and we will end life in good because it continues going forward. Uh, even, even if death is scary to us or, or whatever or can be painful. So, you know, okay, I'm not going to change subjects, but this is, again, I was tempted to go back to what I was saying before, but the, what this is trying to explain, what I'm trying to explain is um, that this means that a question arose, a question arose immediately when we became aware of, of, our, of, of our new predicament, of this capacity to to write and, 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 and do, you know, we probably didn't realize, we don't, if we didn't, if we don't know it now, we certainly didn't know it when it started, but what we did have, what we, what did come to us is the question that, that, that was made because it didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that we would hurt ourselves, in other words. That does not make sense. You don't, you don't see, uh, you know, uh, animals scheming uh, how to invent things that will hurt them. And we kind of take for granted that what we do may end up in the loss. We f factor that in. We've adapted to this failure because we gave it an explanation. It's when mankind needs to explain, answer all its questions, right? When we have something we need to understand or an enigma, or something that needs to be resolved, we're always going to want it. We always need to answer our questions. And so that, that, this is the original question that occurred is why am I, why is this happening to me? This does not, I cannot accept. We could not naturally accept that our own doings would hurt our own children. This is something that goes against evolution. It goes against the primitive harmonious intelligence. The first one it's, it cannot be okay. It's unsettling. And so that, that's how a space for believing that there is something outside that has, is doing this, in other words. So we were created by God and, you know, God has an explanation to our failure. It says you were, you basically you're challenged to try to be good because really you tend to you've messed up you're defective from factory you're born in sin or you know there's people are born bad there's evil there's satan and so all these uh parts of of uh, literature parts of scriptures and different religions explain the existence of 
the wrong, the hurt, the bad? Because we needed that question answered. And so now we can go forward because now we have a challenge that is comprehensible. We don't, we never understand, we should, we should see the challenge differently. Because if we saw it the way I explained it before, it would all be on us. It would all be on us to deal with and and uh, there's nobody out there to help us, basically. Um, or it's nobody's will that we fail or that we, or it's nobody's will that we don't know why it had to be that way. We are answering that question by saying this was, this intelligence was given so that we can survive and, 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 and continue evolving more successfully so that we can solve these problems that come with the world, with existing in the world. But we never answered it that way. We, that of course, that we never really believed. We never understood that an other intelligence in the universe could be just an intelligent conscious being that would do something like this. We, 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 it was, we couldn't think outside the world. And so we, we made a, we made fable and myth and, and sort of parable and, and all these, um, conceptual ideas of what God, what this, what, who was responsible for this paradigm of, 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 of failure when, when it's not supposed to, we're not supposed to fail. We, no living form is supposed to hurt itself, you know? And so we answered that question by making a story that c could be accepted because we weren't ready yet to understand an actual living, intelligent, conscious being scientifically, you know, actually interfering or, or admit that maybe evolution, let's say that's not the case, or maybe evolution actually, this happens in planets. Eventually one species takes off faster and part of its brain starts going a lot faster and boom, you have a, a relationship of, that, uh, that starts betraying um, itself in a way in its avid ambition, evolutionary ambition to go even faster. You know, this would be another theory of, of why these two exist. So the theorem, the uh, existential condition of intelligence theorem, um, pretends to go from this point on. Now, not how these two came to exist, but how, uh, how to proceed, being that these two exist. Uh, and that doesn't mean that there is no God creator, uh, you know, it, that's still there because, I mean, why shouldn't God creator work with evolution and be bigger than, you know, we, there are things that we, we are uncomfortable with thinking, oh, God, you know, and evolution, there are separate things. No. If it's another intelligent, conscious, living, biological form, life form, evolution is just something that happens in, throughout the universe. So, um, and yet scripture could be true, and, and scripture is all about interpretation. There's, scripture not necessarily is lying or unnecessary. We just need to perhaps look at it differently uh, and, and realize that it was, is there for us to interpret it differently, but in any case, this is to say that this belief of, of thinking more scientifically, sort of a, in, in a mathematical, not, not, sort of in a, a, a wiring dynamics of a relationship between two intelligences that causes this perpetual instability uh, that we can actually own and, be, and, and get on the boat and say, okay, we're just going to live with this. At least we know it's there. Let's, you know, if we have to constantly, obviously, we would stop wasting time on fighting each other or on believing these people are wrong or opposing and blocking this group or that group, but we would, it would require the whole collective of humanity to think as one, uh, for one thing, right? But, um, does not mean that we, that we have gone beyond, no, on the contrary, it makes God more real, but it also presents us with something we didn't have before that maybe our creators really say, okay, you do it on your own and pretend I'm not here. <laughs> you know, pretend like I'm not here. You just, I want you to, to pretend I'm not here, which actually makes a lot of sense with a lot of things that scripture says, 
But in any case, this kind of explains what the post that we were looking about is uh, is talking about because we just never get it right, and we are so precociously convinced that you know our institutional systems, the way we design them, must work, and the way money and and we all get we think that money is the way the world needs to operate, and we can't we fail to see that uh, that we're letting this inert, inanimate thing have a will upon the life quality because people empower money and if you empower an object that's going to make an object of the world and it's going to have people think func think the people that um, operate functionally uh, and mechanically because they're using something mechanical and functional so in any case we're dehumanizing the world because people are following money instead of making a world of, 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 of humanity, of human values and, and about quality of life. And so this problem, right, um, that we're all talking about today, uh, would instantly be seized when we understand that it's just a product of that intelligence. Money and the structure of governments is just the, the design of this other intelligence that does not know how to harmonize with the with, for for the benefit of living quality of humanity, it just can do it can do a lot. It can it can reach Mars. It can reach other stars, but it's not going to take care of us, and we have to own that. And that means that uh, well, for one thing, we would have to think collectively as one human species. But then immediately we would have to acknowledge that every single one of our institutions. Our inventions, all of all of the systems of the world are all really deplorably worse than what we could do. We could do a lot better, and we could start by serving that the collective stays together. So if we thought like nature did, which is the first mind, and used that intelligence to serve the first mind instead, which we've never done in human history, we would say, well. We would want, for example, everybody, what we want is to not suffer cold, right? That's the first thing. It's like we got out of us, we got off a spaceship and we just landed on this planet. What's the first thing that we would think of? Well, the first things that matter the most are the, these biologies and these forces of physics that are going to attack the species. And so we want to make sure that everybody has shelter, doesn't suffer cold. Everybody eats healthy. Every, you know, these are things that right now you can't, start talking like that because they you sound like a socialist and you sound like a communist and so on, but you know it, but if, if you take it all the way back to this very very basic uh simplified concept of of, of of survival for the species on this planet and this starting point of a relationship that is uh, we're stuck with and what, how one errs and the other one knows what it's doing. <laughs> it's, you know, it's good to maintain friendships. It's good to not kill our children. It's good to keep the water clean. It's good to, you know, all these things that are true and we'd honor them, which is nat honoring the natural world, basically. And then realizing that we got to watch out with having that intelligence assisted because it's always going to... We would own that relationship. For the first time in human history, um, and this is the theorem, basically the theorem. This is basically what what it it proposes. Sorry, it took so long. Ciao. Bye.